Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy and in today's session our experts trainer will be discussing about large scale data analytics along with exploring fundamentals of data analytics. So make sure you're watching the video till the end. Exploring the fundamentals of data. So what do I mean by analytics? So analytics is basically a systematic uh, analysis or let's say computation and analysis of data, of statistics, right? Why do you want to do this computational analysis of statistics? So let's say you want to go ahead and you know, discover something from the data, interpret something from the data, uh, understand some kind of pattern from the data. Unless and until you're making this uh, effort uh, of you know doing the computational analysis of the data, you will never really figure that out, right? And you have a whole lot of services which will help you do. Well, I think there's a question. Okay. So, see, Shweta, basically, whenever you want to upload something, which is on-prem environment. When I say on-prem environment, let's say you want to go ahead and upload something, which is on your system. Right? So from your system, you want to upload something on cloud. That is where you will go with file share. There's, there's no double check for Because there's no other option which is available, which will allow you to go ahead and upload it in this manner. You know, from on-prem to cloud. Neither your container nor your HR. It's only file share which gets you this type of net. Okay? And the second option, uh, so that is where you know the file share uh, starts and that is where it ends. But as your table, how will you analyze that? So that we decided looking at your data, looking at the format of your data. If your data format is in the form of key value, uh, you know, the pair, the key value pair, in that case, you will go with your table. What if I, my data is in the form of key value pair, but it is on my on-prem environment? Which one will I choose then? So, the first factor, because if it is on, because it is residing on your on-prem organization, because it's on your desktop, there's no second question. You will directly go ahead and use file share, irrespective of the fact that it is in the form of key value format, irrespective of the fact that Azure table is something that will support it. But because you know, check number one, it is on your desktop, you will have to go with file share. I hope that answers. All right. All right. So, see, when it comes to data analytics, what are the various things that we can do? Number one, large scale data warehousing, streaming and real time analytics. And the most important part is data visualization because you're looking forward to gain some kind of insight from data. See, the whole idea of data engineering is the fact that you are going to go ahead and uh, read some pattern identification, some trend analysis, some report, some visual, which is going to allow you to eventually understand how has the past data, how, how was the past data performing? And why are you doing this? In order to go ahead and ensure that you are able to take some decision for your future. Let, let me give you an example. Talk about sales data. In the last year, I have lots of sales data. Statistics are there. The figures are there. But I have no clue if I want to figure out as marketing impacted sales. Or... Now, how will I figure this out? Just looking at the data is not going to get me any information. I will have to create a report showing what was the impact of marketing on sales. Create it like a bar chart, create it like a line chart, create it like a, uh, you know, a donut chart. Whatever you think will be the best in giving that information to the management, choose that and complete. So that is how important it is for data analysis. Okay. So when it comes to large scale data warehousing, there are many, there's the process, you know, where you ingest the data. Remember I told you ETL or ELT? You first ingest the data into your system. You process it, which means you're making uh, data trans uh, 
transformations of cleansing in this process, then you know that the data is residing in your analytical store. And you have to remember, when it is in the analytical store, we are not supposed to go ahead and run heavy queries on the same. Right? Now, once you've done that, you will then move to analytical data. The very word only means that you have to ensure that there are appropriate relationships between all the entities. Right? And over here, you're going to end up with analytical entities. Right? Because these cubes that are created over here are all transformed, they're all processed, and you're getting the cleanest form of data. And this data, this clean data or transformed data is going to supply or it's just going to provide itself as an input to create these beautiful visualizations. Right? Now I can, can say that, okay, when the marketing increases, the sales is increasing. Or this is where I add high marketing. So I can see a large slice of my pie chart has been given. Right? So you can, uh, when it comes to data visualizations, you can actually go ahead and create reports, chart, and dash. Okay. Now, the first task that we discussed behind was about data ingestion, right? So when I talk about data ingestion, see your data may come from multiple data sources, right? You never even know from where your data source is coming from. In fact, it could be inside your, see this symbol that you see over here, you know, this is the symbol of edge account and yeah, storage account. In fact, it could be inside your storage account itself. So from your storage account, you are giving the data as an now, what is the pipeline that they mentioned over here? See here, you are performing extract, transfer, or mold, or you are doing extract, mold, and part. Right? So, when you are performing this ETL or ELT activities, you are going to go ahead and create a pipeline for the same. Right? So, this pipeline is going to go ahead and get the data from the data output, process the data, and then give the output data set. Okay, input data set is there, output data set is there. This is a raw for not very clean. Okay, whereas this one is the transformed and clean. Okay, so what is going to happen intermittently between, you know, taking the raw data and then processing it as clean data? Intermittently, you will have a list of activities in a particular sequence. Right, I have a sequence of activities, activity 1, activity 2, then there is a decision making where I have further branching, activity 3, activity 4 and so on. Right? These activities, each activity is performing some action the data. Okay. See intermittently, when I say it's performing some action on the data, it may be processing the data, it may be cleansing something from the data. Whatever is the case, you're taking the help of other services to do. As you can see in the screen right now here, it's taking the help of SQL, Databricks, etc. in order to go ahead and perform the cleansing and the transfer. All right, let's move ahead to the next slide. All right, thank you for confirming. Okay. So, we discussed about transactional data stores. Then we discussed about how the data is pulled from the transactional data stores and how you have to go about creating the pipeline to transform the data. And what next? Next, you are ready to dump the data in the analytical data stores, which could be again your data lake or it could be your data fair. Okay. So when you're looking forward to dump this analytical data, now the case is that you have got the data, you have transformed it, you've cleansed it, your job is done, what next? So when you're looking forward to, uh, to dump the data in the analytical store, in that case, you you have to consider this particular scenario when there is large scale relational data. Yeah, data is denormalized for query optimization because it is the last stage after the processing. But when it comes to data lake, in this case, you have a distributed file system. Remember I told you, it could be blob storage or it could be 
areas that you can. Okay. And then when you're going to save the data inside the data lake, you have multiple ways of accessing the data of that. Calling is <coughs> sorry. Polybase is one of the techniques. Using a SQL query is one of the techniques. Running a pipeline is one of the techniques. There are so many different ways in which you can actually do the same. All right? Choose an analytical data store. Now, what do I mean? Then? Remember, that really when you have data stored, you make the wise decision which one, you, whether it is Azure Synapse Analytics, whether it's Azure Databricks, or whether it's Azure HD. Okay, so I'm not going to get into the depth of these services because we haven't really covered these services. We get to do that. All we need to understand is these three services will give you the uh, transact analytical data store. From your transactional data store, you will pick the data and dump it inside this analytical data store. I hope that makes sense. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy and if in case you want to have a deeper dive, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on Azure Data Engineer for Data Engineer Jobs and if you want to register for the same, then you just have to visit k21academy.com forward slash dp20302. You'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now, select an event date. Enter your full name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of URL on the extreme right. Save that URL, add it to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class.